today we are going to learn how to restore old photographs. First, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open Photoshop and then you have to have the photo that you want to edit over here. All you have to do is drag and drop it onto the open. And then if you just give it a minute and wait for it to load, it'll go ahead and load up. If this pops up, all you have to do is hit open. And then once we have this open, we're going to come over here and we're going to right click. We're going to duplicate the layer. We're going to do this because as we make changes, we want to be able to see what the original looked like to make sure everything's still looking okay. So we're going to go ahead and click this button, this little eyeball here, to go ahead and make it invisible. So if I turn this layer off, you won't be able to see the one underneath. And then the main tool that we are going to be using today is right here, this is the patch tool. So it looks like a little sewn on patch. So we're going to click that and then we're going to go ahead and zoom in. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to edit, preferences, and then we'll go to general. And in tools, you want to make sure zoom with scroll wheel is turned on because I'm going to be using that a lot. If you have a mouse, that's going to be that little center button in the middle, the little scroll wheel. If you are on a laptop or on a tablet, this isn't going to be too helpful for you. You can just scroll and pinch with your fingers, or you would have to use the zoom tool right here that looks like a magnifying glass. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, and we're going to go ahead and take a quick little look at everything that's going on. So we have a lot of dust particles. We have a lot of scratches and folds. That's going to be what we're getting rid of here today. We're going to start off by showing you guys how the patch tool works. And then once we go ahead and get the hang of that, we're going to go ahead and zoom through this. So with the patch tool, all you have to do is draw and make your selection. And then you're going to drag that selection box to another area and it'll replace it. So you can see it totally got rid of that scratch. So if I hold Alt and I click the bottom, you can see the before and after. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to actually match the textures and patterns. We don't care too much about the color. And we're just paying attention to textures, patterns, light and dark. So right here, we got a sharp dark and a sharp light. So we wanna make sure we drag this to another area of the sharp dark and sharp light. And you can see the preview right there. So we'll line it up and that'll look pretty good. We're just gonna go ahead and blast through this a little bit. And once I get to an area where there's a difficult texture or something, we'll go ahead and go over that. And then when we're working on these pieces, you wanna make sure you're working in little small chunks. You don't wanna do something big like that because you can get some really weird dark areas. And if you ever mess up, you wanna hit Control and Z. You do it twice and it'll undo it. And for things like these windows, our best chance at repairing them is going to be find one that's fully intact. So we'll go ahead and take off this window one chunk, and we'll go ahead and drag it over one chunk that is not damaged, and we'll try to line that up to the rest of the window so as best as possible. And you can see that did kind of fix it, but it gave it an odd color. 
So we'll undo and we'll go ahead and try a different window to see if we can find a better approach. If it still doesn't work, it means we have a dark area that's trying to blend. So we'll go ahead and we'll select half the window and we'll go ahead and try that way. You can see that worked a lot better. And then with areas like these wrinkles in these folds, you want to make sure that you are exceptionally good at matching because you want to go ahead and keep all those folds because that actually defines the volume of the clothing. So just like everything, you're just going to be following the shadows. You don't want to make unnecessary new shadows. You don't want to get rid of any shadows. You don't want to add new highlights. And then anytime you are working on anyone's skin, especially with their face, um, we don't have any face touch-ups that we have to really do here, but you again want to make sure you're following the shadows and the planes of the face. There might be times where you do have to rebuild some textures. You just do that from borrowing. So like right here, I got the crease from this crease right here because it's paying attention to light and shadow. And then once you've fixed all the major problems, you'll want to go through and fine-tune all the minor problems as much as you can. Again, the level of detail that you put into this is totally up to how detailed your image is, how damaged it is, how repaired you want it to be. So I'm just going to do a little touch-up on the speckling down here, and then we will get into color adjusting, which will be our final step for this one today. And 
once we finish, we're going to go ahead and right click and duplicate the layer again. And with this, we will go ahead and hold Alt and then go ahead and click this and you can see the before and after. So we did a pretty good amount of change here. And then on this top layer, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to filter, camera raw filter. And that will open up this color editing menu. So if you've ever used Lightroom or if you've ever messed with cameras at all, this will be really familiar to you. We're going to just be using the exposure, contrast, highlight shadows, white, black, and we're going to play with the vibrance and saturation a little bit, as well as we might mess with the texture and the clarity a little. So the first thing that I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to color balance this. If you are in a quick rush, you can go ahead and use this white bounce to a little eyedropper and then click on an area that's supposed to be white. That'll go ahead and color adjust us just a little bit, but you can really get deep into it if you look up here and have our little light graph. We want all those colors to be overlapping perfectly. So we could use these sliders to do that. You can see that's a little bit closer right there. This side is our lights and this is our blacks. Our lights are what I want to make sure is color just the most. Once we do that, we'll go ahead and look at our image. It's a little dark, it needs to be brighter. Up the exposure to make it a little brighter. And then we notice that's a little washed out. Can't quite see the folds in his pants. We're losing a little bit of detail here and there. So we'll go ahead and we'll mess with the contrast. We'll bring that up. It'll make the darks darker and the lights lighter. And you can see that helps a little bit, but we're losing more detail in the folds of her dress. So we're gonna go ahead and bring the highlights all the way down and the shadows all the way up. And you'll see we'll get a lot of that information back. And now from here, we're gonna go ahead and look at our graph up here. And what we want is we want our lowest darks which is the tallest spike at the end, to be in the middle of this category, which it is. And then for the whites, we want it to be in the middle of this category, which it's a little off. So what we would do is we just take the whites and we bring them down just a little. There we go, that's close enough. And then you can see we have a lot of texture here. So we'll actually bring that down just a smidge. And then for the vibrance, this would be how colorful you want it. So you can see if we pull it all the way up, we have a lot of blues and purples in our image right now. And we don't really want that, so we want to go ahead and bring that down. So we're going to bring the vibrance down. And there we go. Once you get it so it's looking good, you go ahead and hit OK. It'll take a second and then I'll load in. And then we can go ahead and do what we did before, but we'll do it on the second layer because that has our edits. So we just want to see the color change. Hold Alt. See our before and after. And I think that's looking pretty good. And as a little bonus, if we wanted to go a step further and get rid of some more of the spickling, we can go to Filter, Noise, Dust and Scratches, We'll zoom out so we can see it. Click that preview on and off because that'll actually show us our preview here. And the default one pixel is looking pretty good. But let's see if I can do half a pixel here because sometimes you can. Nope, same ones are minimum. So it's looking pretty good. I think I'll go with that. So I'll hit OK. And you can see that does blur it up just a little bit, but it gets rid of a lot of the speckles. So again, I'll hit Alt and you can see that before and after. It's a big difference. You can see a lot more of the detail. You can see the stripes in his pants. That's going to be it. Once our photo is all done, we're going to hit File, Save. And then you're going to choose somewhere to put it. I have an old photos folder on my desktop, which is where I'm going to put this. And then we're going to put Edited. We're going to save it as a Photoshop file, whether it's um, PSD, which is Photoshop, or large PSD, depends on how big your original file was. Mine was pretty large, so I'm going to have to do a large document file. So we go ahead and hit save, and then normally there'll be a little loading bar here. 
Then the next thing we're going to do, that way you can print and you can go ahead and save this out. Is, oh, there goes the loading bar. We're going to save this out so that way you can share it with other people. We'll print it out. We're going to go to export, file, export, export as. And let me bring this window over here so you guys can see it. And then this window will pop up. You would either need a JPEG or a PNG. That's totally up to you. I'm going to just say this one as a JPEG. So we're going to hit export. And then you're going to find whatever folder. As I said, here's my old photos. We're going to name this one edited. And then hit save. And then once it's saved, we are good to go. We can go ahead and close this. And that's saying make sure you want to save but we know we saved as a photoshop file so we can hit no and then if you look over here in my folder we have the edited version and the original version so you can go ahead and see these side to side when it comes to restoring old photographs you're never going to get them perfect but you can definitely make them a lot better and especially if they're your old family photographs it means a lot just to be able to see a face a lot clearer and if you ever need to go back and you say, oh, well, I don't like the speckling on your face. I wish I could have gotten rid of that. You have the Photoshop file. You can always go back in and do it again. And you don't have to start from the beginning. Another thing is you could always take this photo and you can go through all the same steps again as well. The more times you process a photo, which means the more times you go in and edit it, the less quality you're going to have overall. And that's going to go ahead and be the end of our tutorial. Feel free to come by the DMS.